please let's welcome Mr. Daniel Sandoval, who came all the way just for this event and is leaving on the first flight tomorrow morning. Uh, it will be uh, Saturday. Ah, oh, so get started. Enjoy this country a little bit more. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Let's start. Emerging oil and gas economies. Lesson for Guyana from the Mexican experience and the quest for economic cooperation. Uh, protocol observer. Uh, I want to thank Vice Chancellor Professor Adlon for inviting me to join this academic discussion in the present context of the economic transformation of Guyana that the oil and gas sector is widely expected to affect. I will address a number of issues that have to do with some relevant experience in Mexico regarding the rapid expansion of oil revenues in at least three episodes of our economic, Mexico economic history, as well as some lessons learned that, are key, that can be relevant to for Guyana. My presentation is intent on shedding light to concrete experience for a mostly down here practical aspect and consist of four parts. The role of the, the bad deposit of oil and gas can play in the economic development of Mexico, the twin episodes of a significant surge in export earning in the oil and gas sector, and the very different outcomes that policy makers achieve. The recent enactment of a comprehensive legal reform in oil and gas in Mexico, highlighting best practice. Lessons learned by the Mexican economy in the context of decades of massive export of oil and gas. First thing, the oil, uh, we have the first uh, period, the oil industry in Mexico between 1901 and 1938. Mexico has been a major oil producer since the Devano oil field started business in 1901. Indeed, in the 1920, the country was the world's second largest port. However, during the first four decades of rapid expansion of the oil and gas industry in Mexico, the oil companies were insulated from the national economy. They, cre they created few jobs. They were not interested in uh, building domestic skills or training local, the local population and paid almost no taxes to the national treasury. Oil extraction in Mexico was a very profitable for foreign companies, mostly UK owned and US owned. Mexican oil fields ranked among the most productive in the planet production at the richest uh, oil well, several soon four, averaged 260,000 barrels per day. The lack of connection between the oil exporting industry and the rest of the economy led to the foreign, the foreign companies to ignore the rules of Mexican courts. At that point, the federal government could not avoid the firms to defy the authorities, and in 1938, the oil industry was expropriated. And that's the second period. The role of the oil industry in Mexico between 1938 and 1979. After four decades of export-oriented oil exploitation in Mexico, the country lacked the skills and technology to manage the industry. And this dire situation led the federal government to establish specific training institutions, such as the National Polytechnical Institute, which became a research university and has a memorandum of understanding, and currently has a memorandum of understanding with the uh, University of Guyana. Out of the government lack of the resource to invest in the expansion of the oil and gas sector from 1938 to 1978, the National Petroleum Company, Pemex, remained the single largest company in the country and the energy sector focused on supplying the national economy. The rapid industrialization in Mexico from 1940 to 1970 evolved in lockstep with an oil and gas industry that vastly expanded its value chain and diversified into petrochemicals. A reliable supply of oil was instrumental to build a resilient, resilient economic economy. Although Mexico's oil were small, uh, from 1950 to 1970, the national economy sustained the growth rates by an excess of 7% per year with the inflation. This process was known as the Mexican miracle. A key element in the quest for the domestic capacity was the creation in 1965 
of the engineering body, the Mexican Institute for Petroleum, which provides solutions to low value involved upstream activities related to extraction and downstream uh, activities involving in oil process. A distinct feature of the EMP early year was its focus on practical tasks, as the Institute was set to to an inland basic oil industry, which had to devise new strategies in the mid 70s when large offshore the oil field were screwing the top of Mexico. And this will become the toxic oil boom of 1979 to 1981. After decades of extracting modern bowls of oil, around 200 uh, barrels per day, mostly for domestic consumption and low price of exports. In 1979, as a result of the offshore discoveries and the prices spikes caused by the 1973 and 1979 oil shocks, the National Oil Company in Quebec became the world career leaders exporter of a high priced community, shipping more than 3 million barrels of oil per day. The transformation in terms of employment and income in the new oil hubs in the regions of Campeche and Tabasco was dramatic, with traditional teaching communities gaining population and turning into middle middle class cities. For instance, Ciudad del Carmen, a fishing town until the 70s, saw its population double in the decades of the 80s and fell double again as the town became a home and oil hub for the with extensive infrastructure infrastructure. But in the absence of check and balance at the National Oil Company, the motion and hazard revenues from oil export ended up fueling what can only be called a toxic oil boom with a hangover that was left to last 20 years and burden Mexico with huge external debt. From 1979 until the oil prices fell in 1982, the Ministry of National Assets pressed the National Oil Company to scale up investment by taking into the international financial market to raise foreign currency denominated debt with short term maturity. The government of the day was betting on permanently high oil prices to pay for a huge surge in Quebec's investment. That means a threefold spike on Mexico's external debt that uh, means a uh, uh, broken oil price led to the currency shortage, contraction of credit, devaluation, inflation, and a few decades of negligible role of the national economy. I'm not discouraged. <laughs> From 1979 to 1981, all export sparked an expansion in domestic aggregated demand that led to 8% GDP growth per year with a 30% inflation. The fall in export revenue the made the economy crash to persistent stagnation with over 100% inflation per year during the 80s. The international price of oil was to remain essentially flat from 1982 to 2002, around $50, uh, $50 per barrel. Uh, drop for 98 when the, the price will be really covered in uh, today the dollar per barrel. Now to the last phase. The more cautious approach to the oil boom of 2002 to 2014. The 1979 to 1981 oil boom saw the price of oil travel and petrol by half. The oil boom after September 11 was much bigger. From uh, 2002 to uh, 2008, international uh, uh, price of oil rose tenfold, uh, up to $330. Uh, $30. Been a, a small drop, uh, well, quite a drop during one year uh, for the crisis. Uh, uh, followed by a fair recovery from 2010 to 2014, with an average of $100 per barrel. In the stark contrast to the situation of the productive sectors in 1982, when the Mexican economy was basically closer to import and relying on oil to access foreign currency, the decade of oil boom in the early years of the century formed an essentially open Mexican economy that has free trade agreement with 44 countries. Mexico currently receives foreign currency in seven major ways export of manufactured goods, agricultural exports foreign direct investment, oil, raw materials, remittance, and tourism. The sudden bout of prosperity of the oil and gas sector elicited a cautious approach from the national government, rather than tying into foreign debt, most in the, of the existing stock of external debt was swapped for peso denominated debt with long-term maturity. Consumer prices have seen little inflation in more than 10 years, and even the 40% elevation of Mexico peso since 2012 have almost no commercial credit, uh, effect on commercial credit. Uh, the 50% drop in oil price since 2014 has failed to go to the energy export, who so far have limited spillover effect over the larger national economy. 
expected inflation for uh, this year is below 6%, and domestic credit has not contracted. Since 2013, Mexico has been intent on modernizing the oil and gas sector and developing debt water reserves. In order to achieve this, the Mexican Congress enacted a comprehensive sector report in order to tap into international best practice and transform the oil and gas industry from a more European model to a more competitive model. This comprehensive approach has to reform the laws to discuss on the surveillance. First, set a clear purpose for the oil industry. Uh, over 40 years, uh, the foreign oil, oil, oil companies uh, contributed little to the national economy, even in the way of taxes and revenue. After the expropriation of 1938 uh, until the 70s, the nationalized oil industry received little revenue in the way of export, putting to provide reliable oil supplies to the domestic needs, which it made possible for the entire national economy to expand rapidly. Improved industry governance. The oil boom of the, deliberate, of the 80s the delivered short term gains, good fame in absence of proper checks and balance in policy making. The quest to expand export quickly led to the indebtedness, distorted domestic price, and the result was a decade of stagnation. That will ensure that happen again, and the most important provision for that is a robust and traditional governance. In Mexico, better unity governance must start with a very board of the national oil company. Uh, for political reasons, the working of the uh, union was allocated seats at the board four years ago. That situation didn't improve decision making. The comprehensive reform had to correct the situation. As in 2017, the Surveillance Board of National Oil Company, Phoenix, has 10 members, Minister of Energy, Finance, three officials for the federal government, appointed by the president, and five independent board members with a professional experience in the field appointed by the federal government, and ratified by the Mexican Senate. Proper regulation of the, for the oil industry goes beyond the composition of the board and the National Oil Company. The recently enacted reform grew from international best practice, and uh, put in place regulatory mechanisms that include the central government and three technical bodies that with considerable autonomy. The Energy Regulation Commission executes oversight of the petroleum and electricity utilities in order to promote better performance. The National Commission for Hydrocarbons allocates production blocks and monitor reserves. And the Agency for Safety, Energy, and Environment deals with rate price. Thank you. Encourage private product investment. Until recently, the basic model in Mexico regarding oil and gas consisted of one national oil company and one central regulator with a visible role for the Ministry of Finance and the development of the petroleum industry. Since 2004, the new approach has been taking shape. The national oil company can now create young ventures teaming up with domestic and international oil firms, and even entering farm out, such as the one announced with Australian Jans, the HP Building. Given the current availability of fines in the international markets, it makes no sense for the Mexican government to raise them in order to invest in oil and gas industry. Instead, three rules should engage, engage private companies to compete in order to obtain conditions for equal footing and develop deep water reserve with state of art property technology. So far, compressing comprehensive energy sector report has been delivered in December the allocation of 11 blocks, uh, uh, which was oversubscribed, and international companies such as Italian Eni made commitment to invest more than $70 billion. Oil is an important part of the economy, not the entire economy. The most important lesson that Mexico learned is that oil and gas should be a very important industry, but it should not be allowed to distort the entire economy in, in, in times of boom or in years. As in uh, 2017, Mexico exports some 400 billion US dollars of goods. Current truck made the single largest export, amounting to 30 billion dollars a year, given the value of uh, chain of the motor industry. Mexico also imports large quantities of intermediate goods. So in the start of oil boom, the term exports have been between five and eight percent of total exports. This means that in case of Mexico, the bulk of foreign revenue come from other sectors. Agriculture has become a major currency area, even as Mexico has become a larger producer chaser of grain export of what fresh and frozen produce have performed their wealth. This helped Mexico to keep a super rabbit in the agricultural trade balance. The outlook for 2007 is that external sales of mainly non traditional cash crops such as very avocados, garlic and tomato will accept 30 billion US dollars. So while a profitable oil industry is a survey, proper attention has to be paid to agriculture as well in order to other uh, industries in order to promote sustainable economic growth. Thank you very much.
you very much. And this continues to be a learning exercise. Definitely, we have to look at checks and balances. Definitely, we have to look at other areas in terms of what we are doing and don't become dependent on oil and gas.